Good morning, everybody. We will start with the, the morning session today. And uh, the first talk will be given by uh, Marina Amado Ferreira from Helsinki. And Marina will speak about multi component coagulation in Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the, to the organizers for the invitation to talk here. Uh, I'm doing a, a postdoc at uh, Helsinki and I'm going to talk about the work in collaboration with uh, Jani Karinen from Helsinki, Alessia Nota and Juan Velasquez from here on uh, multi-component coalition equations for aerosol dynamics. So aerosol are uh, uh, particles in the atmosphere that uh, when they collide they merge and they form bigger aerosols. So these are the seeds for the formation of clouds. And uh, um, one of the so this is the, the one of the main processes when a, a, a particle with size x collides with a particle of size y, then it produces a, a bigger particle of size x plus y at a rate kxy. This can also represent mass or a number of uh, monomers. Okay, this uh, this is the the. In the, the phenomena we want to, to study um, and, uh, and uh, we would like to study it at the larger scale so we will consider a coagulation equation for the, the size distribution particle size distribution we, we use the small Shovsky coagulation equation that has been proposed in 1917 and this is the equation for the density of clusters of size x at time t uh, this is uh, a interior differential equation in, in case where x is a continuum in, is in R. This is the continuous version. In the discrete version, we have a system of ODEs where alpha is the number of uh, monomers that constitute one particle. Uh, so the the evolution is uh, uh, governed by a gain term that corresponds to the uh, collisions between the smaller clusters, so clusters with size x minus y with clusters of size y to form one of size x, and the loss term which corresponds to the coagulation of particles of size x with another particle. Okay, and the same in the discrete, uh, in the discrete case. Uh, the, we assume that the kernel is symmetric and uh, for, for specific kernels the, uh, such as the uh, constant kernel like k equal to 1 or the additive kernel k equal to x plus y or the multiplicative k equal to x, y it's uh, possible to solve these equations explicitly and in general uh, there is uh, well positiveness results um, obtained by noise and then uh, extended by Fourier and Lorenzo for, for some class of kernels. Um, these equations they can be also derived from the particle system, and this has been done uh, in a few works. So in uh, 1980, Lang and Shen have obtained the, the small shocks equation with the constant kernel starting from a system of Brownian particles where the size does not change after collision, after coalescence. Uh, later, uh, in 2007, Hamon de Reza obtained, uh, considered the case where the, the size does not change but the diffusion coefficient changes after collision. And uh, more recently, uh, Juan and Alessia studied the case where the the size changes, and uh, this seems to, to bring additional technical difficulties. So in this case, they, they considered the one tracer particle moving in a straight line and coalescing with randomly distributed fixed particles. So as far as we know, these are the only rigorous results that exist, and in general, it's, uh, it's an open problem. Okay. Uh, so in my talk, I will uh, I will first talk about the one component correlation model and uh, show some existence results and non-existence. Uh, then I will uh, in the second part I will talk about multi-components 
and uh, the multi-component is is the case where x is not a real factor, uh, a real variable, but it's a vector. So instead of having the size, we, we consider different types of particles, and and we consider the constitution, the composition of a particle, um, given by different types of molecules. In that case, we will st study the shape of the solutions. Okay, so to motivate uh, our work, uh, we have been talking with physicists from Finland. Uh, they are doing experiments. Uh, actually, they are measuring the uh, uh, sizes of of aerosols in the atmosphere uh, in um, in in Finland. Uh, this uh, and this is the type of uh, data that they get. So here in the vertical axis, it's the particle size. In the horizontal is the time in days. One day uh, correspond, uh, each shape here corresponds to one day. And in color is the density of, um, of particles. So we see here that uh, in the morning there are uh, very small particles. Uh, and this, this is like a source that is uh, produced uh, uh, from the interaction of the sun and plants. So you know, then uh, the source stops, so there, is, there seems to be an intermittent source. Uh, also, we see that the, the clusters, they grow. No. I will use the word cluster and particle to be the same. So they grow uh, over, uh, over the day, and, so, um, and this is due to coagulation. So, so what we want to start to study is coagulation with source. This, uh, this is the motivation, and we will study uh, stationary solutions. So here we have again the, the continuum equation, and uh, here we have this eta x, the source. We assume that the kernels satisfy these growth conditions, so they are uh, growing uh, like x to the power gamma plus lambda and y to the power minus lambda or uh, some gamma and lambda constant. And uh, the source is, is compactly supported in the regions of small sizes. Uh, okay, this, uh, for this uh, class of kernels, we, uh, we have uh, that the, the physically relevant ones, they, they are in, inside this class. And these are, uh, uh, for, uh, for example, the ballistic kernel, that uh, the physicists use for, uh, to, to describe the coagulation at nanometer scale. And uh, the diffusion kernel is used to describe the, the, the coagulation at the micrometer scale. These kernels, they, they have been derived from empirical laws um, by assuming some, uh, um, some uh, conditions, so some physical conditions, so they assume that there is a, uh, so, so the coalescing particles are moving in a, in a, a swimming pool of gas molecules, that uh, these gas molecules, they, they have elastic collisions with the coalescing particles, and it is assumed that there are many more of these collisions with these background particles than with the coalescing particles. And this allows to drive the system towards equilibrium, so then they assume that the velocities are not swelling. So, so what, 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 do you know what we use ballistic? Because I know what it means in some kind of, uh, what, what does it mean uh, that is a ballistic region in the, in the population? Oh, it means that they move, um, more or less like, like in straight lines before finding another coalescing particle. Okay. This, uh, but in physics, this has another name. I think it's it's still called diffusion kernel for the three molecular regimes. Yeah, like because usually in kinetics, when we use this ballistic, is when the forces are actually are stronger than the than the dissipation that comes from the conditional integral, but. It may be different. I, I like mm -hmm. we can talk. Okay. Um, 
Okay, it is also assumed that uh, all collisions between coalescing particles will merge in particles. And in the case of the ballistic kernel, uh, the size of coalescing particles is much smaller than the mean free path. So this means that they they will uh, they will coalesce before diffusing too much. So they are going in uh, approximately straight trajectories. While the, in the diffusive in the diffusion kernel, it is assumed that the size of coalescing particles is much larger than the mean free path. Okay, um, so now we study the, the existence of stationary solutions of the equation and uh, uh, we use the weak uh, uh, formulation. So, so F um, is a, a positive bounded Haber measure satisfying F0 and equal to 0 and uh, uh, satisfying this boundedness of these moments. So the moment gamma plus lambda and minus lambda are finite. And we say that F is a stationary solution if the following identity holds. This, is, uh, this corresponds to the weak formulation of the stationary equation uh, of that I showed before. So F, uh, phi is a test function. Uh, and uh, beta is the source. Yeah. So, so we look for solution for the existence of solutions of this uh, form, uh, and uh, we we were able to obtain existence in the case where um, gamma plus two lambda is uh, smaller than one, yeah, absolute value. However, if it, uh, if it is larger than one, there is not any solution in the sense of this definition. And this was uh, a bit surprising because... Uh, uh, so, so this solution, just to maybe give some nutrition, the, we are always... What yeah. is the assumption on the kernel again? Okay. Okay. The, the assumptions are... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So gamma and lambda come from here, yeah. <coughs> but the, the ones that the physics use are, are, are sort of factorized, I guess. Yeah. No, 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 but I mean, the carrier will use the other one. Okay, okay. 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 So, so these yeah. solutions, they. Um, so, so the system is uh, has a source term, and so there is always a flux of particles in the size space from small to large particles. <coughs> so these are non-equilibrium stationary solutions. And uh, what seems to happen in this case, at least one of the mechanism, is that uh, the coagulation is so fast that uh, um, the the particle the, the after some time the um, the mass goes to zero everywhere, even at the source site. So the particles are immediately eaten by a huge particle and they, uh, they leave the system at infinity. Um, yeah, and then it doesn't satisfy the equation because f equal to zero doesn't satisfy this equation. This is non zero here. Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm now going to talk about the, the multi components. So, so the, the, the next step would be to generalize this to the multi-component case, get some this result in the case of multi-component. So far, uh, we have been uh, studying the shape of solutions, and uh, the motivation for this is uh, this, um, this work by, by some chemists and uh, physicists. Uh, and this, these are simulations where they compute the energy associated to clusters composed uh, by two different types of particles. Bases and acids. So these are uh, as, uh, sulfuric acid and ammonia. Um, and they, they use some quantum chemistry uh, to, to compute these uh, coefficients. And one interesting feature is that uh, they see that the Less uh, the the less energetic ones they they uh, they are in this in this line. 
So this motivates us to, to try to, to look for this type of solutions in the coagulation equation where the mass concentrates along the line. So, so we, we write the multi-component uh, equation which is, looks like the, the one component one except that now x is a vector uh, in Rd and uh, this vector, these integrals are multi-dimensional uh, and the same in, uh, in the discrete uh, in the discrete equation beta smaller than alpha means that each component is smaller or equal and alpha is different from beta and we put the source at the more numbers here so uh, in this work we, we use the, the discrete equation and uh, we want to try to to look for solutions with this shape. So, um, okay, maybe I, I say that uh, this, for these equations there's even less theory, there has been some, uh, they have been solved also in the explicitly solvable kernels, so the constant, product, and uh, sum. Uh, but uh, otherwise there's no much theory about them. And uh, uh, in particular, Krapivsky and Benheim in 96, they propose a, they, they found this approximation for a solution for large uh, clusters. The, the solution in the case of constant kernel should uh, approach this shape. So we see that uh, there is localization here. Um, so in the, in, the, in the direction perpendicular to the localization line, the, the solution is approximately Gaussian. Okay, we would now like to look for these solutions for more general kernels. So what we are going to do is to try to... We are still going to use the constant kernel, but uh, try to prove localization without using the explicit solution. And then we hope that we would be able to generalize it to other kernels. Uh, so we start uh, by writing the, the weak formulation, uh, which uh, so we consider the, the, the equation without source and in dimension two for simplicity, but the same result holds with source and in any dimension. So psi is the test function, um, and and j is the j for the moment. And we start by uh, writing the um, uh, expressions for, for these two moments. So M0 is uh, of order 1 over t, and this is obtained by, by considering psi equal to 1 here in this equation. Uh, also, we, we compute the, mo the moment alpha 1 minus k alpha 2 squared, where alpha 1 alpha 2 are the components of the vector alpha. Okay, uh, the notation is a bit bad, but um, <coughs> this is a, a linear function of y. Okay, and now what what do we do? So we what we are going to 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 do is to study this function r epsilon, uh, and this function it contains the mass outside of the of the line. So theta is uh, given by a over uh, um, norm of alpha, where a is alpha 1 minus k alpha 2. And when eta is 0, then alpha 1 is equal to k alpha 2, and this is our line. So k is the slope of the line. So if, uh, if eta is, uh, is large, then uh, we are outside of this bulk region uh, near the line. And, uh, our epsilon corresponds to the mass outside of, of the line. Okay, and uh, what we when, what we prove is that uh, if the if our epsilon is zero in the beginning, then it will remain zero, so the, the mass will stay on the line. Otherwise, if it is uh, positive, then it will converge to zero uh, as epsilon goes to zero and time goes to infinity. So there is a, a concentration of the mass along the line. 
for much time. Okay, uh, just to, to give uh, the um, <coughs> K. K is a, a constant, a real constant, and this is okay. Yeah, this is um, what is going to be at the slope of the line, and actually it's determined by this condition here. No, but it's intuitively, I think that was very clear. The K is the ratio between the the source, of the, the concentrations of the sources. I mean, you are injecting monomers of two different types, and K is the ratio between the two types of monomers. Yeah. I mean, the, the line goes uh, along the direction in which you are injecting. I mean, it goes, it goes along, the con along the concentrations in the line in which you are injecting. So, so in this case, I, I don't have source. Uh, I'm considering the case without source, and in this case, the line is actually determined by the initial conditions, not not the source um, rates. But yeah, in case of source, it will be the, the ratio. Could you please explain to me why psi depends on t? So you have this expression for a, a R subscript psi in which it seems that the psi and t are um, not correlated, but then mm -hmm. afterwards you have epsilon t that goes to zero as t goes to infinity. So uh, it's like it's epsilon is a sequence depending on t. So I don't know. Uh, we was just notation. Well, yeah, we we take a sequence of epsilon going to t, uh, going to zero. So epsilon is a function of t. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is just the, the general definition for this. Okay. Um, <coughs> epsilon. So yes. And then we yes, as the uh, mm -hmm. as the source actually is yes. in alpha. So what like pushes it? Epsilon of t, and then the whole thing has a dependence on t in two parts, so the epsilon and the alpha, right? Yeah. Okay. So I see. As you span t, then in a part of t, and yeah. the whole plate, and that expands yeah. to the main. So the k, the k, the k is basically the ratio of expectations of alpha two divided by alpha one. Yes. yes. Uh, at, at time zero, so this um, this zero is time. Uh, yeah. Sorry about the notation. Uh, yeah. Okay. So to obtain this, I'm just going to give the, the ideas of the proof. So we first use the cauchy schwarz inequality to write uh, this uh, uh, this uh, estimate for r squared. <coughs> Uh, then uh, we estimate this part here by using a shell like estimate. Um, and we estimate it as uh, being of the order epsilon to minus 2 times a, the moment a squared at time t. So theta times norm of alpha is equal to a. If I go back to the here, theta times norm of alpha is a. And then from the previous result, we have that uh, a squared t is, uh, is given by this expression, and uh, by assumption a0 zero is 0. So we have that a squared t is equal to a squared 0. So finally, we have that r square is smaller or equal than epsilon squared uh, minus 2, um, a squared 0 times m0t. And uh, uh, if a square 0 is different from 0, then this is of the order of epsilon minus 2 times t to the power minus 1. Because in the proposition, we have that M0 is a further 1 over T. Okay. And so we, we obtain the result that if A square 0 is 0, then uh, R epsilon is 0. 
Otherwise, we choose uh, epsilon in this way. And, uh, um, and then we obtain that i epsilon is smaller than the order of t to the minus one fourth, so it will go to zero as time goes to zero. Okay. Yeah. And so just some remarks. Uh, yeah. So the, the mass concentrates in the region of space satisfying that uh, equal to order of epsilon t, so at, in the region where alpha 1 is uh, approximately equal to k alpha 2. Uh, and if the region is, uh, if initially it is concentrated there, then it remains in that region. Uh, the slope is determined by the initial conditions in this case. And in the case with source, it will be determined by the source rate. Uh, localization, yeah, seems to be an interesting phenomenon. We would like to explore it now for other kernels, but we, we are still working on that. Yeah, and uh, so the current work is uh, uh, try to extend the existence theory for uh, multi components, uh, try to do the localization for other kernels. And then open problems are the, the derivation from a particle system and one could also study more complex systems with fragmentation, the position source that are also used by physicists to model different processes in that mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is all. Thank you. Is it for technical reason or for modeling reason that you don't take very small particles? For technical reason, yeah. Even though you have mid correlation, it's. Yes, it because the, the kernel is singular at zero. Okay. That's true, okay, yeah. Um. <coughs> so, just a comment. <coughs> if you had a list of derivations from the, from the particles to the specific, there was a paper of mine also. Okay, thank you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Have you uh, on the <coughs> studies uh, or that you know of the coupling of the small Lukowski with the fluid dynamics? Because that source, that, this is my question, is started the solution of some other problem? Because sometimes, you know, the, the coupling system may ameliorate many of the properties that, that you want, because it, but I don't know. I mean, where, where is the source of the, the nature of the source? What is the source of the source? <laughs> what is the nature of, uh, is it? Uh, this the, of the source term? Yeah, it has to be a probability distribution because it's, it's placed at the level of the, uh, of the so PDF, yeah. I said. In the case of the discrete model, we consider constant source at the monomers. Um, okay, so it would be a cutoff function to make the problem. In the, in the continuum case, we consider comp compactly supported function. Ah, it could be like another probability or another species, like mixing with another species. Like in our, I mean, like what I described yesterday, it would be something at an equilibrium. I know, but it's completely external. You don't make it. Yeah. You don't make yeah. it proportional to the quality distribution of. No, yes. In your example, you show it's data. Yeah. And what was the source of the. Um, yeah. Please. 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 What are the particles? They are So, I don't know. No, it's a map of the diameters. You don't see the particles. No, just information about the diameter. What kind of particles are there? The, this, this EBS was an acronym for something, but I don't remember. It was something like that. 
Quindi mi deve essere un po' di lupi se gli altri sono contaminati. Mi deve essere che si sarà sulfurica, si sarà ammonia, al smani di massetti. Quindi si deve essere di MPS e vuoi anche una crisi a croni, ma te lo dico anche. Quindi vuoi anche un bel video di stress. Uh, I have a question about the, you, you have a, an existence result for your, the steady state. Is there a uniqueness also? I, no. no. And you don't know? No. It's, uh, it's difficult to get uniqueness. But you, you, add, you, don't, you cannot add a criteria in order to select the good one. And, on the kick, yeah, that's for the same situation as in the engine for the same situation, 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 the same